Now, so we'll continue with the today's uh, class, dural venous sinus. Okay. So the dural venous sinus. Um, uh, these are the objectives. First, we are going to talk about the introduction. Then, what are the characteristic features of dural venous sinus? And what are the classification? There are two classification: unpaired and paired sinus. We are going to deep see about unpaired and paired. And uh, cavernous sinus, very very important essay that you are that we are going to see here and applied anatomy related to that. Okay. So first we'll see what is dural venous sinus. Okay. So actually all over the body you have veins, but in surrounding the brain you have dura that is uh, in between the that is endosial and meningeal layer of cranial dura you have venous sinuses. So they are nothing but the venous spaces present in the cranial dura. So that is mainly formed by the separation of the two layers that is um, endosial and meningeal layer, and also it is formed by the reduplication of the meningeal layer. Okay, so all the dural venous sinuses will be uh, present between the endosial and meningeal layer, but two dural venous, inferior sagittal sinus and straight sinus. Yes, they are present only in the meningeal layer. So this is the difference uh, between the other sinus and inferior sagittal sinus and straight sinus. You do understand what is dural venous sinus? It's nothing but the venous spaces present in the cranial dura. Okay. So clear? Shall I continue? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, what are the characteristic features of the uh, dural venous? Sinus? So, will you tell the structure of the vein? Histological. Uh, what is the lay? What are the layers of the vein? Any one of you will you tell? Gautam, are you here? Rule number forty-one. Will you be able to answer for this question? So, what are the layers of the blood vessels? Gautam, will you answer? Okay, uh, Hari Krishnan, will you answer for this question? From tunica intima, tunica media, tunica. Very good. Tunica intima, media, and uh, what is the third layer? Advent. Adventure. Advent. Okay. So, what are uh, intima has? What are the layers? Rahul, one not one. Will you answer for this? What are the layers of the tunica intima? Just recollect. Endothelium. Very good. Endothelium and subendothelial tissue will be there. Okay. So now, uh, actually, if you see the um, tunica intima, it is lined by endothelium. There is nothing but the simple squamous epithelium. Okay. Then media has. Tunica media has what? One or two ragul is there? Will you answer for this? Tunica media has what? Puja rule number ninety. Okay, if you know, just answer. Otherwise, there no need. Okay. Um, Smoke, don't think Madam is asking question also here. So, by my argument, we'll be able to do that. Shuma, the angle recollect from the beginning. Muscles, ma'am. Ah, muscles are there. Okay, good. Elastic so, fibers. Muscles are there. Collagen fibers are there. After elastic fibers are there. Irka, is there? Vasa, vasa, or Irkuma? Irkuma, Irka, da. Okay. So, Irku. Okay. Now we will see what is the difference between the Veins and the dural venous sinus. Okay, so it is lined here also. It is lined with endothelium, but it is devoid of muscular coat. So you know the veins will have valves, but here there are no valves. Okay, so it mainly collects blood from the brain, meninges, diplo, and from uh, internal ear and orbit. What is diplo? Do you have any idea about diplo? Diplo na enna yar ka jada terima. 
எனக்கு பதிலுக்கு ரிப்ளை பண்ணீங்கன்னா தான் கொஞ்ச நாச்சும் எனக்கு இன்ட்ரஸ்ட் இருக்கும் கிளாஸ் எடுக்க இல்லனா நோ ஐடியா மேம் ஆ ஓகே நோ ஐடியா ஓகே சோ டிப்ளோனா ஒண்ணு கிடையாது ஓகே தி ஸ்கல் போன் இட் இஸ் திக் இட் ஹஸ் டூ லேயர்ஸ் அவுட்டர் லேயர் இன்னர் லேயர் ஓகே இன் பிட்வீன் யூ ஹேவ் அ டிஷ்யூ தட் இஸ் कॉल्ड டிப்ளாய்ட் டிஷ்யூ சோ அந்த டிப்ளாய்ட் டிஷ்யூ will have diploic veins okay so that's why the diplo is nothing but a middle layer of the skull okay it's like a spongy tissue between the outer and uh, uh, inner layer of the skull okay it uh, it also absorbs csf through arachnoid granulation and it also receives valveless emissary veins so uh, to maintain an equilibrium of venous pressure within and outside the skull what is emissary vein at this point i want to ask you what is emissary vein do you have any idea so emissary veins are nothing but the veins present in the skull okay so this emissary veins uh, through small foramens in the parietal bone and in the occipital bone and the temporal bone this will communicate with the intracranial venous sinuses okay so clear about the characteristic feature of the dural venous sinuses so vein will have muscles but here muscles is absent veins will have valves here valve is absent so veins will collect only blood okay but here it also collects blood and absorbs csf okay so clear no shall i continue okay now we'll go on to the classification of dural venous sinuses there are two uh, classification one is unpaired sinus and paired sinus so the unpaired these are the names okay i am going to detailly tell just you mug up the names because it is an important essay question classification of dural venous sinus and uh, describe the cavernous sinus in detail with suitable diagram is a very important 10 mark question essay question okay so you have to mug up all the sinuses no other way okay now first we'll see about the unpaired sinus the first sinus what we are going to see is the superior sagittal sinus so uh, what is the name of this fold any one of you will answer for this question harini uh, roll number 44 what is the name of this dural fold will you answer for this flax cerebri very good flax cerebri okay so now uh, this is attached margin and this is the free, free margin so now you can see the superior sagittal sinus in the attached margin of the flax cerebri so actually it starts at the crista gallae okay so it starts at the crista gallae just behind and above the foramen cecum okay so here it communicates with the uh, nasal vein and it extends up to the internal occipital protuberance so where it usually turns to the right side and continues as the right transverse sinus this is usual sometimes unusually it may turn into the left side and it may continue even to the left to transverse sinus okay so it is present in the attached border of the cox cerebri it begins at crista gallae ends at the internal occipital protuberance okay in the starting point it receives nasal veins okay at the ends with by continuing with the right transverse sinus okay so clear okay now you can see in this picture so here the superior sagittal sinus connects with the right transverse sinus this right transverse sinus so both the right and left transverse sinus connects with the sigma sinus here the sigma sinus connects as the internal jugular vein okay which enters through uh, jugular foramen it comes out of the skull okay now we'll go on to the next slide so confluence of sinuses are tarcula herophily what it is what do you mean by this it's nothing but the dilated posi end of the superior uh, sagittal sinus is called as the confluence of sinuses okay so it is present on the right side of the internal occipital protuberance actually there will be a depression on the right side of internal occipital protuberance so there lies the confluence of sinuses so usually the right transverse sinus will begin from this confluence so this confluence also receives the occipital sinus occipital sinus is a content of fox cerebelli so that is uh, end in the confluence of sinus so through a communicating vein it also communicates with the left transverse sinus 
So now clear about the confluence of sinus. Yes, ma'am. So ma now we'll go on to the interior of the superior sagittal sinus. Okay. Now see this coronal section. So now this is the uh, this is the uh, section of the superior sagittal si uh, sinus. In cross section, it appears triangular. Okay, you can see triangular in cross section. Okay. So the interior consists of arachnoid granulation. You can see the arachnoid granulation. So it also consists of venous, that is lacunae. And it also consists of superior cerebral vein. See the superior cerebral veins is um, entering into the uh, superior sagittal sinus. And not only it has also some fibrous tissue. Okay. So what is lacunae? You can see as I said, I told lacunae. So they are nothing but the irregular venous spaces intervening between the two layers of dura. They are mainly in three portion. You can see frontal, parietal, and occipital. So it mainly collects blood from the diploic and the meningeal veins. Okay, even from emissary veins. But the superior cerebral vein will drain only in the superior sagittal sinus, not in the lacrimae. Okay. So the lacrimae receives the diploic vein, emissary veins, and meningeal veins. So even sometimes the arachnoid granulation will project into the lacrimae. So clear about the interior of the superior sagittal sinus? Okay. Now we'll go on to the, um, you can see the superior cerebral vein. This is yesterday's picture only. Uh, what are the tributaries of the superior sagittal? So there are um, 8 to 12 superior cerebral veins, and other than this, Diploic veins, meningeal veins, and emissary veins through lacrimae will drain into the superior sagittal sinus. Okay, so what are the communications of the superior sagittal? So through emissary veins, it will communicate with the veins of scalp. So through foramen cecum, it will communicate with the veins of the nose, and through anastomotic veins, it will communicate with the cavernous sinus. So through this communication, the infection can spread okay so from nose the infection will spread to superior sagittal sinus from there it may even go to the cavernous sinus so from scalp the infection will uh, through emissary vents will spread down to the cavernous sinus through superior sagittal sinus okay so this is the main applied aspect of the superior sagittal sinus so the infection will lead on to thrombosis so this results in defective absorption of CSF, then there will be accumulation of CSF that will increase intracranial tension. So this is the result of the thrombosis of the superior sagittal sinus. So clear about superior sagittal sinus, any doubt? Superior sagittal sinus is an important five mark person. Actually, in uh, dural venous sinus, they will ask either as a SA or sometimes cavernous sinus as a five mark person. If it is not asked, then other important five marks are superior sagittal sinus, transverse sinus, sigma sinus. So other are less important only, but you have to know about that. Okay. Now come to the inferior sagittal sinus. So this inferior sagittal sinus, it lies in the lower border of the coccyx. So be in the posterior two thirds only, not in the anterior part. See, the anterior part, it is, uh, there is no... Uh, inferior sagittal sinus here. Okay, you can see in the posterior two third only it has the inferior sagittal sinus. So this receives mainly the tributaries from the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. So at the junction of the fox and tentorium cerebelli, so this inferior sagittal sinus is joined by the great cerebral vein of Galen. So both the veins, now inferior sagittal sinus and great cerebral vein of Galen joins to form the straight sinus. So clear, now you are clear, shall I continue? I am a little bit fast because uh, uh, if I am not um, going fast means um, it will extend beyond 8.30. Okay, shall I continue like this or you want to be a little bit slow? Now also you people will not answer. Yeah, continue. From what can chat, no? Okay, continue. Good. 
okay now we'll go on to the next sinus straight sinus okay so i already said how the straight sinus is formed anyone will you answer chanakya will you answer how the straight sinus is uh, formed now only i said you can see the picture and tell how the straight sinus is formed so this is the straight sinus how it is formed by the union of the inferior sagittal sinus and the great cerebral vein okay so this lies at the junction of the fox cerebrae and the tentorium cerebelli okay so this is the this arrow mark this is the inferior sagittal sinus and here is the straight sinus okay now uh, this is the great cerebral vein of sinus okay now it is present along the junction of the fox cerebrae and tentorium cerebelli it begins as continuation of inferior sagittal sinus so at the internal occipital protuberance it continues with the left transverse sinus so which continues with right transverse sinus hemant will you answer for this question which continues with which continues with uh, right transverse sinus hemant so i am asking question just to recollect okay superior sagittal sinus very good superior sagittal sinus okay good okay now we'll see the tributaries of the straight sinus so uh, the first tributary here is the inferior sagittal sinus okay the next will be the cerebellar vein superior cerebellar vein and third tributary is the great cerebral vein of galen okay so this great cerebral of a uh, vein of galen actually it is formed by the union of the two internal cerebral vein at the base of the skull okay so it is mainly it acts as a ball wall to regulate the formation of sinus because inside this you have numerous plexus venous plexus so so this acts as a ball wall to regulate the formation of the sinus this is the main function of this so now i'll go on to the next slide occipital sinus you know occipital sinus where it is present it is present in the attached margin of fox cerebelli this is the smallest sinus so it begins as a small radicals near the margin of foramen magnum and terminates into the confluence of sinuses okay so clear actually in vishram singh book it um, it is given wrongly so that's why i have uh, taken time to type everything here uh actually in vishram singh it is given it starts from confluence of sinus end in foramen magnum that is wrong it starts in foramen magnum and end in the confluence of sinus okay so clear about occipital sinus okay now we'll go on to next and part sinus that is anterior and posterior intercavernous sinus so this is the cavernous sinus this uh, both the side cavernous sinus is communicated by the anterior and posterior intercavernous sinus okay so actually it passes through the diaphragma cell uh, in front and behind the opening of the infundibulum of the pituitary gland so it connects the cavernous sinus it, the shape if you see it is circular sinus surrounding the diaphragma cell as i said i told in the content of the diaphragma cell so now clear no anterior and posterior intercavernous sinus okay okay so we'll go on to the next uh, thing next and part sinus is the basilar venous plexus okay so now see this picture this is the basilar venous plexus which lies on the clivus so clivus sh itself i told it is a sloping surface of the occipital bone uh, which larges the uh, pons and medulla oblongata okay so now the uh, network of plexus lying on the clivus is called as the basilar venous plexus so it connects the two inferior petrocell sinus and it mainly communicates with the internal vertebral venous plexus where this internal vertebral venous plexus is present so anyone will you answer kausalya roll number 71 so where this internal vertebral venous plexus is present jaso will you answer for this question where it is present in which space it is present internal vertebral venous plexus
you can unmute your mic and you can answer answer really okay answer very good epidural okay so now this basilar venous vessel through inferior pituitary cell sinus it communicates with the internal vertebral venous vessels so other than this, uh, this basilar venous plexus, if this is bled from the pons and medulla oblongata, so this thrombosis of uh, basilar venous plexus is really fatal because it communicates with internal vertebral venous plexus. Okay, now I'll go on to the paired dural venous sinus. So far you have seen the unpaired dural venous sinus. So uh, will you, some of you, will you name um, uh, the... Uh, unpaired venous sinus any one of you will you name krishna will you name the unpaired dural venous sinuses superior sagittal inferior sagittal very good superior sagittal, inferior sagittal then the right the sinus is then anterior posterior intercavernous sinus basilar venous Plexus and occipital sinus. Okay, good. Okay, we'll continue with the paired dural venous sinus. So the paired dural venous sinus, as I already said, you have paired sphenoparietal sinus, paired cavernous sinus, paired superior petrocell sinus, paired inferior petrocell sinus, paired petroscomous sinus, paired sigmoid sinus, paired transverse sinus. Okay. So now we'll see the first about the sphenoparietal sinus. Okay. So what is the name of this part of the bone? What is the name of this bone? Will you somebody will answer? What is the name of this part of the bone? Pogilamani, are you here? Will you answer for this person? Okay. Has Very good. Yeah, it's sphenoid bone. Okay, good. Okay. Now, this is the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Okay. Now, the sphenoparietal sinus, it lies along the posterior free margin of the lesser wing of the sphenoid. This is the sphenoparietal sinus. Actually, it drains into the anterior part of the cavernous. This is the cavernous sinus, which is located on either side of the body of the sphenoid, which is the largest sinus. Okay. So, this is the cavernous sinus. And you can see the sphenoparietal sinus is draining into the anterior part of cavernous sinus. If you see the tributaries of sphenoparietal sinus, it receives some dural veins and even it receives the anterior temporal diploid vein and it also receives a tributary from the anterior division of middle meningeal vein. Okay, so clear? Okay, I'll go on to the next slide. So next is about the superior petrocell sinus. So the superior petrocell line uh, sinus uh, before going into that what is the name of this part of the bone uh, roll number 26 Bumika will you answer for this what is the name of this part of the bone if you don't know others also can answer you can even type in the chat box Petrous part of the temporal bone. Temporal bone. Very good. Petrous part of the temporal bone. Okay. So this is the superior border of the petrous part of temporal bone. And the inferior border is here. And this part is the apex of the petrous part of temporal bone. Okay. Now the superior petrocell sinus. See, this is the superior petrocell. See the arrow mark here. This is the superior petrocell sinus. Which lies in the anterior part of attached margin of tentorium cerebelli. Okay, so lies in the superior border of the pet, uh, petrous part of temporal bone. Here it crosses the trigeminal now. This is the trigeminal now. You can see the three divisions of trigeminal now here. Trigeminal now arises from pons. So you can see the ophthalmic division, maxillary division and mandibular division. So this is the trigeminal now. So the superior petrocell sinus crosses the trigeminal nerve close to the apex of petrous part of temporal bone. Okay. So and, and finally it is connected to the cavernous sinus here. You can see it drains into cavernous sinus. 
sign up okay so now the um, it collects the blood from the cavernous sinus and from there it goes to the transverse sinus you can see this uh, connecting to the cavernous sinus from here it goes and end in the transverse sinus okay now if you see the tributaries of the superior pterygoid sinus it receives inferior cerebral vein and veins from the tympanic cavity and from the superior cerebellar vein actually the pterygoid part of the temporal bone consists of middle layer and internal layer so the middle layer is also otherwise called tympanic cavity so now the veins from tympanic cavity drains into the superior pterygoid sinus so now clear about superior pterygoid sinus any doubt in this okay i'll continue with the inferior pterygoid sinus so this is the enlarged image of the previous picture only okay again uh, this is the spino parietal sinus cavernous sinus this is superior pterygoid sinus and here is our inferior pterygoid sinus just see the inferior pterygoid sinus along the inferior margin of the pterygoid temporal bone okay so now uh, it lies in the pterygo occipital suture so it drains the cavernous sinus into the superior bulb of the internal jugular vein okay so now this inferior pterygoid sinus it forms the first tributary of internal jugular vein internal jugular vein is a continuation of the sigmoid sinus through jugular foramen it exits the skull and it lies in the neck along with the carotid artery okay if you see the tributaries of inferior pterygoid sinus the tributaries are labyrinthine veins from the internal ear uh, from the pontine uh, veins and inferior cerebellar veins even the medullary veins also will drain into the inferior pterygoid sinus so clear about inferior pterygoid sinus any doubt okay so i'll continue on to the transverse sinus okay so now you can see in this picture this is a, a right transverse sinus left transverse sinus the right transverse sinus is a continuation of the superior sagittal sinus so which conveys as the right sigma sinus this conveys as internal jugular vein the left transverse sinus is a continuation of the straight sinus which conveys with the left sigmoid sinus so this transverse sinus lies in the groove of uh, the occipital spoon, uh, bone on either side of internal occipital protuberance the name of the groove is groove for transverse sulcus okay so if you see the tributaries of the transverse sinus the tributaries are superior pterygoid sinus inferior cerebral vein inferior cerebellar vein and the posterior temporal diploid vein and even the inferior anastomotic vein also forms the tributary of the transverse sinus so any doubt in this transverse sinus so it starts at the internal occipital protuberance so it is a, a content of the tentorium cerebellum this fold is the tentorium cerebellum so now the transverse sinus is an important content of the tentorium cerebellum okay so clear okay so now i'll continue with the sigmoid sinus so sigmoid means a shape okay so you know the sigmoid sinus it lies in the sigmoid sulcus between the pterygoid and the occipital bone and uh, pterygoid part of temporal bone and occipital bone here this is the sigmoid sinus okay uh, actually the sigmoid sinus is the continuation of the transverse sinus it ends as the internal jugular vein okay so um, actually the tributaries of sigmoid sinus are mastoid and condylar emissary veins cerebellar veins labyrinthine veins so in the in case of thrombosis of the uh, sigmoid sinus the actually the thrombosis of sigmoid sinus is more common because it communicates with labyrinthine veins and cerebellar veins actually labyrinthine vein is mainly internal ear in case of any infection in the ear it will lead on to the um spread of infection to the sigmoid sinus this results in sigmoid sinus thrombosis okay so clear okay so also the otitic hydrocephalus so what it is is the inflammation of again the middle ear 
so accumulation of csf in the middle layer okay will occur in thrombosis of sigmoid sinus okay so clear any doubt okay now other pal sinuses are more two more are there petrospinal sinus in the classification i didn't mention about middle meningeal vein even uh, some books says the middle meningeal veins also as considered as pad dural venous sinus but some book it is uh, not saying about this okay so if you see about petrospinal sinus it lies in the petrospinal fissure it drains into transverse sinus so this is the actually petrospinal fissure is here so this is superior petrosal sinus actually uh, between petrous part of temporal bone and squamous part of the temporal bone here you have a fissure that is called petrospinal fissure so here lies the petrospinal sinus okay so it drains into transverse sinus okay so uh, i already said middle meningeal vein has two trunks frontal that is anterior division is called frontal trunk and posterior division is called parietal trunk it communicates above with the superior sagittal sinus so this frontal trunk terminates into pterygoid venous plexus what is pterygoid venous plexus i'll show in the cavernous sinus okay so clear about uh, the other part sinus any doubt in this will you uh, say something in the chat box yes or no are you clear at this point i'm going to the cavernous sinus very important essay question okay shall i continue okay so i'll continue uh we'll go on to the cavernous sinus very important essay okay so you know about this bone uh, uh, now already okay uh, will you answer what is the circled part of the bone any one of you will answer hypofacial what is that hypofacial okay uh, if i have uh, arrowed this part you can tell hypofacial fossa but i have circled the entire part including the tuberculum cellae and uh, dorsum cellae So now, what is this? Cella tussica. Very good. Cella tussica. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay. So what is this um, fossa? This here on on either side, I said that will be a depression. No? What is the name of this sulcus? Carotid sulcus. Carotid. Yeah, carotid sulcus. Okay. Now this is the anterior clinic process. This uh, fissure is the superior orbital fissure. and you can see a foramen uh, here this is the optic canal the optic canal will enter the um, actually will come out of the uh, eyeball through this foramen only ophthalmic artery will enter through the optic canal okay and you can see the other foramens also in the middle cranial fossa so this is the foramen so what is this foramen rotundum foramen oval foramen spinosum this is foramen lesirum okay and this is the foramen magnum this foramen is the zugular foramen you can see the petrous part of temporal bone this is the apex of the petrous part of temporal bone and this is the superior border this is the inferior border this is the anterior border and what is the name of this fissure once again will you answer for this question what is the name of this fissure here superior orbital fissure very good what is the name of this canal here optic canal optic canal so what structure is coming out of the uh, come entering into the cavity what is optic nerve optic nerve what is going after uh, through it optic artery ophthalmic artery ophthalmic artery is going inside the orbit optic nerve is coming out of the orbit okay so clear as it is foramen through foramen rotundum axillary division of trigemin now will leave the skull through foramen oval mandibular division of the trigemin now will leave i said the foramen spinosum here through this only the middle meningeal artery will enter the skull you can see the impression here of the middle meningeal artery this is the anterior division of the impression of the anterior division of the middle meningeal artery this is the impression for the posterior division of the middle meningeal artery okay 
so clear so what is this part of the petrous part of temporal bone apex 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 what is the name of this foramen here foramen lazerum because since it is irregular this is foramen lazerum okay so shall i continue now okay so now we'll uh, go, we'll see about the cavernous sinus okay this is the you can see the coronal section this is the pituitary gland on either side you can see the cavernous sinus so this is the body of the sphenoid which consists of sphenoidal ar sinus this are the sphenoidal ar sinus okay so this is the optic canal you can see the optic nerve and ophthalmic artery here which is um, which is the content of the optic canal so now the cavernous sinus is a large venous space so this interior is traversed by number of small spaces which consists of numerous trabeculae hence the name it is called cavernous sinus the small spaces are called caverns the small spaces are produced by the interlacing network of fibers that is called trabeculae okay so now uh, if you see the location of the cavernous sinus it is situated on either side of the body of the sphenoid in the middle cranial fossa so this is the cavernous sinus so it is located on either side of the body of sphenoid in the middle cranial fossa okay uh, if you see the extent of the cavernous sinus it is extends from uh superior orbital fissure to the apex of the petrous part of temporal bone okay so extension from superior orbital fissure to the apex of petrous part of temporal bone is about 2 cm long and 1 cm wide okay so now uh just uh, i'm going to explain a, a little about the inferior surface of the brain this is the inferior surface of the cerebral hemisphere so this green color one is the frontal lobe and this is the temporal lobe this is the occipital lobe okay and this is the median longitudinal fissure now you can see the pituitary gland here so this is the optic nerve which forms the optic chiasma you can see in this picture also optic nerve forms the optic chiasma then it forms the optic tract okay and uh you can see the midbrain this is a section of the midbrain so this is the crus cerebri of the midbrain this part is called as the crus cerebri of the midbrain okay so why i am why i am telling about all this part you uh, know so these are all uh, forms and relates uh, forms related to cavernous sinus that's why i am explaining this part and you can see the this is the olfactory bulb this is the olfactory okay uh, olfactory bulb and olfactory tract okay and this divides to form olfactory striae so you can see in between the optic tract and olfactory there will uh, you have numerous perforation here so this part is called anterior perforated substance so why it is perforated means it is it will be pierced by the choroidal arteries here okay and this part of the temporal lobe is called as the uncus this is called as uncus of the temporal lobe and this is the parahippogonadal gyrus this is the parahippogonadal gyrus now clear about this part of the inferior surface of brain do you have any doubt in this you want me to repeat or i'll continue shall i continue okay once again i am going to repeat so now see the second picture this is the frontal lobe this blue color one is the temporal lobe and the pink color one is the occipital lobe okay this is a lateral sulcus which separates the frontal from the temporal lobe and from the parietal lobe this is the median longitudinal fissure which has the fox cerebri which larges the fox cerebri and you can come to the first picture this blue color one is the olfactory bulb olfactory tract olfactory striae okay and this is the optic nerve 
they decussate here to form the optic chiasma and here is the optic tract okay and between the optic tract and olfactory sphere you have openings small openings this is called anterior perforated substance so lateral to that this part of the temporal lobe is called uncus of the temporal lobe okay this is the parahippocampal gyrus and this is the this you can see two elevation here this is called mammillary body and this is a start of the pituitary gland and tuber cinereum this is the section of the midbrain so this is the ventral part of the midbrain this is called cras cerebrae okay this is the red nucleus of the midbrain this is the cerebral aqueduct of the midbrain cerebral aqueduct is nothing but the cavity of the midbrain okay so i think you are clear now i'll proceed into the formation of the uh, actually how it is formed the cavernous sinus how it is formed this mainly formed by the separation of the endosial and meningeal layer of dura mater so the floor of the cavernous sinus is formed by the endosial layer only see this is this is the green one is the endosial layer so which forms the floor okay this is the lateral wall and this is the roof and the medial wall so all three thing is formed by the meningeal layer so the roof medial wall and the lateral wall is formed by meningeal layer and the media floor is formed by the endosial layer now i think you are clear about the formation so this is the coronal section of the cavernous sinus okay you can just understand this picture okay now this is the pituitary gland start of the pituitary gland this is the diaphragma cellae uh, and this is the optic chiasma optic tract and you can see the internal carotid artery so now uh, you have some openings here what is the name of the opening in this part see the arrow mark and tell will you uh, satikshna will you answer for this person or meena or tislin or pungal anybody will you answer what is the uh, perforated area here called as caverni anterior perforated superior orbital fissure no it is anterior perforated substance okay anterior perforated substance okay so just uh, again i am recalling here so just see this between optic tract and olfactory sphere okay this is the optic nerve so here this part is called as the anterior perforated substance now you are clear so only this image i have yes ma'am shown in uh, coronal section okay now this area for anterior perforated section so here you literally you can see the internal carotid artery also okay now all of you are clear about this image this is the body of sphenoid which consists of sphenoidal arch sinus so now we will talk about the relation so what is the superior relation of the cavernous now see the picture and tell what is the superior relation So optic chiasma, olfactory, optic tract, internal carotid artery, okay, I, and anterior perforated substance. As I said, anterior perforated substance, which is here. So this also forms the relation of the superior relation of the cavernous sinus. Okay. Now, in addition, you have the olfactory tract also, which also forms the superior relation of the. cavernous sinus okay so now we are clear no okay now come to the inferior relation so inferior relation you have to think about the bone only so you know this place is for the cavernous sinus okay so now inferior it is related to the foramen lazerum inferior it is related to the foramen lazerum lazerum okay. and also the junction between the body of the sphenoid and the greater wing of sphenoid this junction also forms the inferior relation of the cavernous sinus okay so clear about the inferior relation okay next we'll go on to the medial relation so medially it is related to hypophysis area that is pituitary gland and sphenoidal arch sinus clear or not can i continue about the relation
Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, medial is related to pituitary gland and penoral arthritis. Okay. Now we'll go on to the next uh, relation. Laterally, laterally it is related to, as I already said, it is related to temporal lobe. It is uncus of the temporal lobe. Okay. So clear? Okay. Now come to the posterior relation. Posterior is related to the crest cerebrae of the midbrain. Okay. Posterior is related to crest cerebrae of midbrain. So other than this, so it is also related to the apex of the petrous part of temporal lobe. Okay. So now clear about the relation, any doubt? So it has superior relation, then interior relation, posterior relation, later relation, and median relation. Okay. So come to the anterior relation. So anterior anterior is related to superior orbital fissure and the apex of the orbit. So now this opening here is a superior orbital fissure. Okay. So clear? Okay. So now I'll go on to the relation. Below and lateral. So below and lateral it is related to mandibular now. Mandibular now is a branch of the third branch of the third division of trigeminal now. Okay. Now what are the structures in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus? So at this point, all of you, which I have posted in Google Classroom, there is a mistake in that I typed wrongly. Actually, in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. See, here I have modified here. Uh, actually, in order from above downwards, the first relation will be the oculomotor now, third cranial now. Then fourth cranial now, that is the trochlear now. Then ophthalmic division of fifth cranial now. And maxillary division of fifth cranial now. But in the Google Classroom uh, PDF format, I have typed wrongly it as trochlear now. All of you correct it. Okay. Uh, don't um, write uh, wrongly and read wrongly because madam has posted and so all of you please correct i will once again uh, even in the whatsapp i will uh, send the message to everybody those who have not attended can utilize that okay now success in the lateral wall of cavernous sinus are third cranial now fourth cranial now and ophthalmic division max division of fifth cranial now okay so it's now clear now the sexes passing through the medial wall of cavernous sinus are internal carotid artery and the sixth cranial now the name of the sixth cranial now is the abducens so now i think you people are clear about the relation and sexes in the lateral and medial wall now i am continuing with the uh, tributaries just see this picture okay uh, so you can see inside the cavernous sinus, you can see the internal carotid artery. Okay, you can see the trabecular pattern of the cavernous sinus. Okay. okay. Now come to the tributaries. So actually, uh, the cavernous sinus extends from superior orbital fissure to the apex of the petrous part of the brain. So it will receive tributaries even from the orbit also, and you, from the brain and from the meninges. So from the orbit, it receives three veins, superior ophthalmic vein, inferior ophthalmic vein. So this is a superior ophthalmic vein. And also from the central vein of retina. Usually the optic now, behind the optic now, uh, you have central artery and vein of retina. Okay. So now from the brain, it receives two veins. One is the inferior cerebral vein and uh, sphenoparietal sinus. This is the sphenoparietal sinus. Okay. Uh, so from the brain it receives sorry uh, from the brain it receives two veins inferior cerebral vein and superficial middle cerebral vein okay from the meninges it receives two sinuses one is sphenoparietal sinus and frontal and anterior trunk of middle meningeal vein so now you are all clear about the tributaries so the tributaries of the cavernous sinus are from orbit from brain, from meninges, from the orbit, there are three tributaries superior ophthalmic vein, inferior ophthalmic vein, central vein of retina. So, from the brain, two veins inferior cerebral vein, superficial middle cerebral vein. So, from the meninges, two veins sphenoparietal sinus and frontal and anterior trunk of middle meningeal vein. Okay. Now, we'll, you can see uh, the superior ophthalmic vein and the 
inferior ophthalmic vein here it communicates with cavernous sinus and you can see the other vein communicating with the cavernous sinus here the sinoparietal sinus ophthalmic vein okay so now we'll go on to the communication so now uh, cavernous sinus drains it where the blood from the cavernous vein is, is draining i already while taking other sinus i have told little bit i think you can recall again so it, it drains into transverse sinus both right and left transverse sinus through superior petrosal sinus and Trans here, yeah good okay and even it communicates with internal jugular vein through inferior petrosal sinus okay it communicates with the internal jugular vein and uh, and through anterior and posterior intercavernous sinus it communicates with the uh, right and left both the right and left cavernous sinus are communicated okay so other than this in this picture you can see it is the anterior venous drainage of the head and neck so you can see the superior sagittal sinus everything okay here is the internal jugular vein okay this is the external auditory meatus opening of the external ear so just to inside of that you can see the internal starting of the internal jugular vein so you can see the uh, sigmoid sinus here okay and uh, above that that is just uh, behind the temporal bone that is where our tedian is located so okay and uh, here is the area for the cavernous sinus see the pituitary fossa here you here is the cavernous sinus will be located and this is a mandible bone and this is a zygomatic arch in between the gap you can see the pterygoid venous cleft so this is the pterygoid venous cleft okay now this is again you can see the eyeball so this is the superior ophthalmic vein inferior ophthalmic vein both drains into cavernous sinus so this is the facial vein okay so the facial vein also will communicate Uh, with the cavernous sinus through angular vein the angular vein will continue with the superior ophthalmic vein okay so actually the supra trochlear vein and uh, uh, supra orbital vein joins to form angular vein so which can communicate to superior ophthalmic vein from there it goes to cavernous sinus if any infection in the face will go to the cavernous sinus that's why you should not touch the pimples okay so if you are uh, removing the pimples what happen if it gets infected okay so that infection will spread through facial vein into the pterygoid venous plexus or through uh, angular vein it go to the superior ophthalmic vein from there it goes to cavernous sinus it results in thrombosis of cavernous sinus so now the area around the nose upper lip okay this area is called dangerous area of the face if you uh, remove the pimples in that area it will cause serious infection okay now if you see the communication it even drains into pterygoid venous plexus through the facial vein okay so the facial this is the facial vein and this is the de facial vein the de facial vein will communicate with pterygoid venous plexus this pterygoid venous plexus will communicate with the cavernous sinus okay so this are the communications of the cavernous sinus do you have any doubt in the communications uh, some of the pictures i have not added in the pdf no only i have added okay you can utilize this pictures it is available in the uh, atlas okay now i'll go on to the next slide so what are the factors helping in the expulsion of blood from the cavernous sinus so mainly you know the internal carotid artery is inside the cavernous sinus so the pulsation of the internal carotid artery will allow the expansion of the cavernous sinus through that the blood will be uh, flowing into the transverse sinus okay and and also main due to the gravity and position of the head the blood will be expelled from the cavernous sinus to the transverse sinus are uh, through superior petrosal and inferior petrosal from there all the uh, venous blood will go into the internal jugular vein from the internal jugular vein it goes to the where the internal jugular vein capillary vein joins to form 
brachiocephalic brachiocephalic vein end in the superior vena cava from that blood will go into the right atria so this is how the venous blood of the brain and meninges is drained okay now come to the applied anatomy i already said the thrombosis of the cavernous sinus is a very fatal uh, infection okay so it's mainly due to infection occurs in the face or orbit or in the pharynx so this results in severe pain in the eye and in the forehead because of the distribution of the ophthalmic nerve and uh, you will get the ophthalmoplegia mainly due to the involvement of the third cranial nerve fourth and sixth cranial nerve which enter which duly supplies the extraocular muscles of the eyeball and results in the edema of the eyelids with exophthalmia that is protrusion of the eyeballs will occur okay and um, and sometimes you will get the pulsating exophthalmia that means the um, you can see the pulsation of the eyeball so i have posted a youtube link here so um, if you copy the link and you, you can see the pulsating exophthalmia in the youtube link okay all of you just uh, note down this uh, youtube link otherwise if you just put it in the net pulsar pulsating exophthalmus the link um, will come you can go and see the pulsating exophthalmus it is a, one of the important applied aspect of the uh, thrombosis of cavernous sinus it's called septic thrombosis sometime uh, there occurs uh, arteriovenous communication due, any, due to fracture of the base of the skull Uh, there will be communication between the cavernous sinus and internal carotid artery this also will result in the pulsating exophthalmus and edema of the eye lid and ophthalmoplegia okay so clear about the uh, cavernous sinus any doubt in that okay so with this uh, this is the last slide these are the mcqs will you uh, some of you will you answer for this option c and d mom right sinus healthy section okay so all the durus uh, dural lie in between the endosian mare except inferior sagittal sinus and right sinus Uh, will you answer for this next question? Characteristic feature of dural except option B, B presence of muscular presence cord. of muscular cord. Very good. Presence of muscular cord. That is the wrong answer. Okay. So uh, I think uh, uh, with this, I'll finish the class. Do you have any doubt? Did you understand my class? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Still, if you have doubt, uh, you can uh, ask in uh, WhatsApp group. Okay. So all of you go and read this topic. It's very important topic. Okay. If you have, if you want any topics in neuroanatomy, because uh, after this topic, again I will come only fifteen days later. That is on ninth of May. Okay. So ninth of May only. is next class for me okay mm. uh actually some of some people are asking for recorded uh, version of this i'll send a link for the recorded version but uh, if i give the recorded version you will not come to the online class that's why i'm not uh, providing recorded link to everybody okay uh, try to listen and read from the book and read from the pdf whatever i have given in addition if you have any doubt you can uh, even call me i have already set the time before 9 o'clock you can call me if i am not free i will call you again because uh, because i have not told all of your number uh, just message me in the whatsapp and after that you call me i will pick your call okay uh, with this i'll finish uh, have you enjoyed my class Okay. So I'm going to leave the meeting.
okay okay thank you for attending the class okay now i am going to end the meeting